Well, hello everyone. Fantastic to have you here. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, we are going to be talking about how to simplify REST API testing. A um, little bit of housekeeping. So this is a Zoom webinar. So it, it will be lecture style. If you have any questions uh, as we go through the presentation, feel free to throw those questions into the Q&A box and myself or Wilhelm will answer those uh, as we're going through the presentation. Um, if you have uh, any particular uh, needs uh, other than that, go ahead and send us a uh, message in the chat to the panelists. Um, just as a reminder, today's session will be recorded and we will be giving you a copy of that recording um, uh, after the presentation. So let's go ahead and start with introductions. Uh, my name is Chris Colosimo. I'm the product manager here at Parasoft, focusing on the functional tools. And today I am joined by my friend and colleague, Wilhelm. Wilhelm, introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Wilhelm. I'm the solutions architect lead here at Parasoft and looking forward to showing you what we have today. Wonderful. Right, so just real quick, a little bit about Parasoft. Um, we are a software tools testing company. We've been focusing on um, software test automation for over 30 years, um, privately held, um, and in, in those 30 years, we've, we've got over 2,000 customers and a 94% renewal rate. So we think we're doing something uh, right. Uh, we do really focus on innovation and pushing the boundaries of what's possible with software test automation. We also really focus on testing strategy and how to build the right strategy uh, for your software test automation. We believe in the principles outlined by Martin Fowler and Michael Cohen when, when they created the test pyramid uh, that said you should build a, um, your testing types in accordance to uh, the pyramid we see on the right here, focusing on establishing broad coverage of those granular types of testing activities such as unit testing, and API testing, because those are the types of testing activities that can get you really high coverage, as well as reducing uh, the mean time to defect remediation, or the amount of time between when you discover a defect and when you um, uh, fix that defect. While at the same time, focusing on minimizing uh, the complex and time-consuming uh, UI-centric end-to-end testing by focusing at lower levels of the pyramid. And we work with organizations to, to establish this type of strategy, as well as introduce a hidden bottom layer of the pyramid, which is static code analysis um, for preventative uh, defect detection. However, when we work with organizations and we say, how are you, how are you actually testing? We see most organizations identify as uh, what we dub the ice cream cone or the inverted test pyramid. Uh, where we have a heavy reliance on uh, manual or UI testing and decreasing amounts of test coverage as we work down the pyramid. And we know why. It's because when we get a requirement, it's much easier to identify how to um, uh, create a scenario or a test automation uh, in the web UI that's aligned to the user story or the, the, the human's behavior. But the challenge is that those tests at the higher levels of the pyramid are, are difficult to maintain in automation over time. Now towards the bottom of the pyramid, uh, we know that these types of tests, API tests, unit tests, extremely fast to execute in automation, but they require a level of technical expertise to build. And so as, as we get deeper and deeper with organizations, we actually see that uh, what's much, much more pervasive now is uh, the martini glass, which is an increased focus on test automation at the tops of the pyramid, manual testing, Folks are skipping right past API testing and doing a little bit of uh, unit testing. And so as we entered into this webinar, we asked everybody a question, which was how much automation have you implemented um, for APIs? And so here are the results of that survey. And first off, thanks everybody for uh, submitting your answer. Um, now, I'm not actually surprised by what I see here. Um, clearly we can see that a uh, very small percentage have achieved 100% uh, and in increasing towards uh, that who have not actually uh, created any API test automation. And I think it's for the reasons that we outlined before. Um, it's, uh, it's typically uh, 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 requires a level of technical expertise and also just the, the time for that. Wilhelm, do you, do you have any opinion here? Um, absolutely. When I work with customers every day, it, there's always a challenge around um, 
looking at the APIs, understanding what needs to be tested and how to go about doing that. So we'll, we'll look further how to do that today. Yeah, and, and, and hopefully through your demonstration, we should be able to help folks see a, a way to simplify that. Okay, um, so, so if API testing is so critical, why, why is it that we're seeing such low levels of adoption? Well, first off, let's talk about the things that we really want to focus on API testing, which is because you can focus on individual components, uh, you can focus on you know, schemas and contracts, uh, it is probably one of the most um, maintainable ways of creating an end-to-end -end scenario because uh, API tests are much more resilient to change. Also, it's a really effective mechanism between development and test. If you discover a defect at the API layer, um, by providing them back an API test instead of a UI test, you're a little closer to the code. Actually, once heard API tests described as unit testing for QA. Um, and as I said before, it reduces that time between I found a, a defect and development being able to um, uh, remediate that defect uh, because we are, we're getting them something closer aligned to the, the, the code. But the reason we don't see this really rolling out is A, the tools and the techniques that are available in our industry are A, either too complex, uh, requiring too much specialized skills to get them going, or are not comprehensive enough to cover the different areas that we wanna focus on for API testing. Um, an interesting third piece to this is it's often described as no man's land. We recently ran a survey we were asking developers and testers, whose job is it to do API testing? And we saw that about 50% of testers said, well, it's the developer's job. They created the service definition. Uh, when they're creating the API, they should create a unit test or something that calls that API and validates that it does what it's supposed to do. However, 60% 60, 60 of the developers said, no, it's QA's job. I created a service definition, consume that, create a client, test the API. So there's a little bit of confusion. Now, now we know that it's, it's both of their responsibilities, and we're going to show how each person uh, can play a role in API testing today. But that's, I think, leading to the confusion and the low levels of API test adoption. Um, so what we typically see is that organizations decide, okay, it's time that I want to do some API testing. It's, I need to bring in uh, a solution. And so they start uh, by developing an internal tool, uh, something homegrown, uh, really targeted towards a specific set of APIs and a specific set of use cases. And this is good because they, we're building API tests and that's important. Um, the, the challenge to this is as APIs change and API uh, technology changes, i.e. different message formats and protocols, we own the support, we own the development of that. And as it starts scaling across the enterprise, that can become a considerable burden. So organizations start looking towards open source or free solutions, which again are great. There is an open source solution uh, for just about everything that you want to do these days. The problem is uh, that because you're using a whole litany of different tools, you create what's known as tool fragmentation across the organization where reports are all being generated in different formats and teams are diff using different best practices and governance techniques. Um, and it's hard to create a consolidated or ubiquitous picture of what's happening with our API test coverage. So organizations then move into uh, commercial uh, testing software. Um, and of course, uh, these are the types of tools that are highly scalable, built for um, communities of practice uh, and center of excellences. They have uh, sharing capabilities, but of course, it requires an investment. Those, these tools are not free. And so when it comes to, to looking for a tool to simplify REST API testing, uh, we see the, the industry breaking down into two types of solutions. Those lightweight tools, such as Postman or Scripps or using a Swagger doc, uh, which are great because you can get immediate access to them, um, you know, typically right in your browser, and then just create some basic lightweight tests. Um, and on the other side of the fence, we have the enterprise tools, which um, make up for the uh, deficiency that some of the lightweight tools have, i.e. extended message formats and protocols and team sharing and, and things like that. And so what's the right answer? Which, which tool do you need, the lightweight or the enterprise? And actually, you need the best of both. And so hopefully, we'll be able to illustrate that to you today by showing you how Parasoft SOA test has the ability to you know, create those lightweight, simple, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, individual experiences right there in the browser, but also has the horsepower to execute across uh, the breadth of your testing interface. Um, but of course, um, once we've identified a technology, we kind of want to think about where our potential targets. And so for that, I'm going to hand over uh, to Wilhelm. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. And so exactly as he said, before we jump in and start looking at the product and how it all works, um, I want to first go over the various opportunities that are available uh, for API testing in modern architectures. So uh, here we can see a uh, modern web application. People typically approach testing it, you know, either manually or maybe through some UI automation like Selenium. And so when you start interacting with the application, um, obviously there's HTML and CSS that's getting rendered on a browser. There's JavaScript getting executed. And some of those JavaScript calls are actually API calls that are being made to server side components uh, where JSON data is getting sent back and then the browser is filtering it, displaying it, um, all of that. And so uh, with this kind of pattern, we see uh, a lot of modern uh, frameworks out there like Angular, React, and Vue uh, leveraging this client-side framework um, to um, you know, improve the, the development paradigm that they have. And of course, Salesforce applications work this way as well. And so we have some opportunities here that we're going to get to. And then once we get to the boundaries of the application, uh, this is where we see uh, the typical uh, API testing thoughts that, uh, that people usually have. So an application is going to expose some web services that uh, are meant for integration with external systems. Um, you might see middleware technologies, enterprise service bus, um, back-end systems getting integrated uh, to maybe more open distributed systems. So there can be a lot of complexity just in the integration between uh, systems within an organization. Um, and so there's a, there's a lot of emphasis that needs to be placed into the API testing strategy there as well. Uh, so with this uh, broadly simplified picture, um, what I would like to suggest is just looking at the web application testing uh, for a moment, when Chris was talking about the inverted ice cream cone and uh, how a lot of organizations today are very focused on the UI, uh, here's a great opportunity when some of these modern frameworks are in, are in use or um, you know, this uh, client side execution of APIs is, is there. Um, we now have a, a broader testable surface area at the API layer from your application testing perspective. So if you have some end-to-end -end scenario like creating an order and then checking the shipping system to make sure the tracking number got created and then checking the account system to make sure the invoice got sent out, uh, this type of end-to-end -end scenario uh, is typically tested or automated through UI, right? And the various uh, uh, portals that you might have. Uh, but that can be very inefficient as Chris went over, right? Like UI takes a long time to execute. Um, the maintenance cost is going to be much higher because the UI is changing more often than the API or underlying API is. Uh, so we have, there are a lot of benefits there. And so what we're going to look at later today is how you can take these UI scenarios and uh, unlock the hidden power of the APIs that are making those stories happen and building a regression suite at the API layer to uh, take advantage of all these benefits. Um, and then of course, uh, you also wanna make sure that you have a solution that's capable of uh, adding some uh, governance and contract testing of the APIs that applications are exposing, or maybe enterprise shared services that uh, need to be tested because they're critical to the application. Um, and so with these types of, of test scenarios, uh, you're really gonna uh, be looking at the potential for different transfer protocols, different message formats, uh, service and virtualization uh, might uh, be an important enabler in the test automation that you need to do there. Uh, so, so these are sort of the two areas that uh, I'm going to touch on and focus on today. 
And now that we have an idea of uh, these opportunities that are available to us, uh, let's go ahead and see um, how that's going to work in a, a day in the life, so to speak, with Parasoft. So I'm going to start off by talking about the developer's workflow and uh, how developers would contribute to this uh, overall strategy. Uh, then we'll migrate to the tester's workflow and how the two roles can really collaborate and work together in an effective and scalable way. Then we're going to look at uh, this um, uh, top-down approach, right, where we can take some of these UI scenarios and through artificial intelligence, uh, build some really nice API scenarios that come out of it. Um, and lastly, I, I'm going to end with the big picture. So putting all of this together, uh, thinking about your CI pipelines and, and uh, how that's all going to work uh, once we've gone through everything. So uh, without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. All right. <clears throat> so uh, what I'm showing you now is uh, Parasoft's continuous testing platform. And we're looking at the API testing uh, page right now. And you know, as a developer, one thing that um, you know, is really important to me is, uh, you know, a lightweight tool, as Chris put it. I don't want to install anything on, on my computer. Um, my requirements are generally not as, as deep or broad as what a tester would be interested in. So uh, for me, I just want to quickly come in, build a smoke test on an API that I may be working on, uh, and then uh, move on with my life, or quickly integrate it into uh, my build and then move on. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is create a new test scenario. And um, the example application that we're going to be looking at today, it's called Parabank. Um, so banking application. And um, let's say I'm working on uh, the deposit uh, functionality and there's a web service tied to it and I could just create uh, an empty test suite and and build things from scratch or I could come in and uh, we have a, a swagger definition for uh, these API's I'm going to use that as my starting point instead and um, notice uh, instead of um, really having to do any any heavyweight work right here in the browser. Um, I've got test clients for every operation in the service and deposit is what I was interested in. So I'm just going to focus on deposit by copy pasting. I don't need any of the other uh, clients right now. So we'll just get rid of that and focus on deposit. So here, uh, this is the interface for defining um, what, uh, what request I want to send in. Um, and so I'm going to change uh, the endpoint here to point to a different server than what the service definition had. And um, now I've got two fields. I have an account ID. So we'll give it an account ID, and then we'll give it an amount that we want to do deposit. So very quickly, I can set up the request how I need it. And uh, I can come in, run the test. And from there, you know, there might not be much more that I, I want to do. Um, you know, as a very quick smoke test, maybe just checking uh, certain uh, data points in the response, or maybe just uh, seeing that a 200 OK is coming back would be good enough. And um, oh, I just noticed I made a mistake in the endpoint here. Um, so, um, so that's, that's uh, what, um, how quickly I can kind of get up and running uh, with my particular test scenario here. Oh, and I also made a mistake on the account number. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, that might be the first step into it. Uh, the other thing is we can come in and uh, add various assertions to the response data. Um, so I could do an asserter. I could do um, also a diff. 
So if it's static data coming back, um, but ultimately um, I can uh, build these scenarios out the way I need and then uh, have this as uh, an effective means of collaborating with testers that are going to then expand this scenario out to uh, you know, cover negative cases, stitching various scenarios together. Um, and so with that, I'm going to switch over to the testers viewpoint. Um, so what we looked at from the developers workflow is how you can quickly get up and running with your smoke testing, your happy path testing. Um, and so for the testers workflow, I'm going to bring up our SOTEST desktop here. So um, here I want to draw your attention over to the right. Here we have a SOTEST server view. And uh, one thing you may have been wondering is how is that web interface that we were looking at earlier really happening? And um, well, it's, it's all happening from API, uh, Parasoft's API architecture. And so um, with that, with the SOTEST server in place, I now have an effective means of collaboration, not just for uh, creating and running tests uh, in, a, in a distributed manner using the web interface, uh, but also for sharing. And so here I can see I'm connected to the same server we were looking at earlier. And as a tester, I can copy a test that say a developer wrote uh, into my local workspace here um, and start extending it. So this is what uh, that REST client we're looking at looks like uh, from the perspective of the SOTEST thick client. And um, all the same functionality is, uh, is here, right? So if we change this to a different account number, Right, the, the request response is all available to me, uh, but I don't want to just uh, uh, be satisfied with the, the smoke testing or happy path testing development did. I want to start looking at what are some cool things that I can do with SOA test to validate that the API layer is both uh, uh, functioning properly, secure, performant, et cetera. And so the first place I'm going to start is um, this contract testing scenario. So one really nice aspect of using service definitions to define your services is it brings a level of governance to your API strategy where you can now validate against that. So what I really mean is say I have this API and if we look at the response coming back, um, everything looks fine, the data is all there. I can see this request coming in, right, for this account number. Uh, but the problem is uh, we have some failures here because the service definition is describing a structure that's different than what the API is actually responding with. So here you'll notice balance is a string when the service definition is saying, hey, that should be a number. And you can, uh, and so this is really valuable because the, the further away you are from a service, the less knowledge you have about it. And from an integration perspective, application teams are always integrating with each other's APIs. And if the API is behaving differently than the contract that describes it, you're gonna run into problems. So here I have this quick test uh, that I can run. Um, where I point uh, our JSON validator tool to the service definition, and now I can validate against the schema described in there to quickly catch these types of issues um, right uh, dead in their tracks. So one quick and easy way to um, maybe find some problems or uh, standardize some of your API governance if that's uh, something you care about. From there, um, it's, it's not enough to just hard code the data that you're sending in. Uh, you actually want to uh, drive your tests with data. So this is where we're going to get into um, data sources. Right? So here I have a service that's requesting a loan. 
But instead of just um, hard coding the data, um, the account IDs are being parameterized from a data source. Now, here we're just looking at the built-in spreadsheet, but for everyone to see, there's a lot of flexibility here, whether you're using a spreadsheet like CSV or Excel, we have a lot of customers that use a database and pull SQL queries to capture the data they want to drive tests with. And we also have special support for hierarchical data um, through our data repository here. And so uh, from there, if we take a look at the response for this test, you can see we have all the request response pairs for the rows of data that we um, did. Uh, and you'll notice this test is failing. And so uh, this leads me to uh, the next topic, which is validation of the data itself. And we can do kind of uh, blanket diff compares of responses that are coming back, uh, or we can do targeted assertions. So if we take a look, what we're doing here is we're just checking the approved field is true. And of course, uh, the API is responding false. So none of these loans are getting approved when we thought they should be. And from a flexibility perspective, you know, whether you're dealing with numbers or strings, whether you're dealing with uh, the structure of the payload coming back, um, differences in ranges, or even compounding multiple assertions together because your data validation requirements are complex, uh, there's a lot of power here where I don't have to write any code because uh, ultimately one of those barriers that we're trying to avoid as Chris brought up is um, uh, having an overly complex or overly technical solution for uh, doing this level of testing. Uh, you shouldn't need to be uh, a programmer to be able to test APIs. I mean, it's nice if you have programming skills and we have the ability to uh, add scripts when needed, uh, but you really want to minimize scripting as much as possible so that uh, not only can a broad audience uh, uh, contribute to the testing here, um, but uh, also it's going to be more maintainable. So if we take a look, uh, the nice thing is, again, there's no scripting necessary to do an assertion. I pick say the message here. And if I'm doing a string comparison, um, you know, we have all the things that you'd expect for a string. So, you know, maybe starts with Chris. And this is of course gonna fail as well. But that's uh, quite easy to build the assertions uh, that you're uh, looking for. Um, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is uh, dynamic data generation. So one thing that might require scripting uh, that we kind of make nice and easy is, for example, you might have a requirement that you have to send today's date in some field in the request. So we have a nice tool that can give you all the uh, date uh, calculations or logic that you might be interested in. Yesterday's date, a specific format. Uh, we plop it into a variable that you can reference elsewhere. And here on the right, you can see, um, you know, when I ran it, the, the data generation, we can do social security numbers uh, with various formats or, you know, kind of any string. Um, so a lot of flexibility and power there as well. So once we move on from kind of data generation and, and asserting on the data, uh, there's a, another really important facet of testing here which is we, we, we're just looking at single API calls in isolation. But as Chris brought up earlier, right, no one really thinks in, in that granular terms, especially uh, testers. You know, people are thinking in terms of, you know, okay, as a user, I need to be able to uh, log in, create a new account, fund that account from an existing account, um, and make sure that all works. So obviously that's gonna take multiple API calls to accomplish. And if we're trying to uh, reap the rewards of testing these end-to-end -end flows at the API layer instead of the UI layer, uh, we need to really understand what, what API calls are required. So 
Uh, in the next section of the demo, uh, when I start uh, introducing you to our Smart API Test Generator with AI, uh, we're going to come back to this create account example in detail. Uh, but what I want to highlight here uh, is you don't. Uh, you can also construct this type of scenario um, manually. Right, like I have the swagger with all the different API calls, and um, you know I I know what API calls the application is making uh, to facilitate this create account flow, and so the the trick here or the the challenge so to speak uh, really comes into the data. For example, um, when I am uh, checking the account details for a newly created account, that newly created account has an ID that's always going to change. Every time I run this test, it's a new account, a new ID. So I need to parameterize the request, uh, subsequent request with that new ID. So uh, as you might expect, we make that easy for you. You can come in uh, through our wizard, select the ID you're interested in, and uh, the tool will do the rest of adding a data bank at the appropriate place, extracting what it is you want to extract, and then parameterizing the field you want to parameterize. Now, what's interesting about this scenario is uh, I've actually uncovered a bug. And I think this is a, a good uh, reference point of why um, it's, it's important to not stop at just uh, what you might consider unit testing individual API calls, but actually putting these API calls together in, in proper sequence uh, to represent the stories and, and, and the actual usage of how applications use them. So here, uh, when I create the account, you'll notice balance is zero. Um, and then very shortly after that, when I get the account details, um, suddenly it's $100 the way it should be. So what happened is uh, at the creation time, that $100 didn't get transferred. And so there's some caching issue that we identified by extracting that balance and then comparing that balance against the balance we're seeing in this subsequent API call. Um, so this data exchange, uh, capturing data from one test step and then using it in another test step uh, is really uh, easy to accomplish, again, without, without a lot of uh, heartache. You just uh, use the GUI to do what you need to do. Uh, so we'll come back and look at this example in a little more detail uh, in the next part of the demo. I just wanted to point out uh, the real importance of building these types of scenarios. This is where you're going to get a lot of value uh, in your regression testing at the API level. So um, the last thing I'm going to talk about before I move on from the tester's workflow uh, is uh, scalability and maintainability. Um, you know, it's, it's an, if, if all you cared about is being able to create a test and run the test, uh, you could use a tool like Postman and get it done real quick and manually execute it. But uh, the, the real challenge is, is in maintaining these tests over time and being able to scale to uh, large user counts, large adoption. Um, and so part of that comes into uh, uh, having the ability to uh, architect or design your tests in a way where they're going to be maintainable. And so for that, let's take a look at an example here uh, where I'm referencing a separate test that has some test steps in it. And you'll notice that, um, right, this is all uh, grayed out. It's, it's um, read only. And so what that means is, um, you know, say here I have an authentication service that returns a token, and I need to pass that token in, in the headers of every other API call. Well, uh, that token service, uh, the, the test step should be defined uh, externally and then referenced in all my tests. So heaven forbid, if this service ever gets updated or I have to make some change, I, I haven't created some big maintenance task of having to go update all 500 tests. I update the test in one place and it gets referenced everywhere else. 
And that theme is all over the place in SOA test, right? Whether there's a global property like JDBC connection strings, whether that's the environments that you're referencing so you can reuse tests in across different environments very easily. Um, we've, we really thought long and hard on what you can do to build your tests in a maintainable and reusable way. Um, and so that's a key thing. And part of that involves also change. So when you do have to go update tests, you can do search and replace, or I'm gonna come back to all the benefits that you get when you're using service definitions to define or describe your services. We can also do um, some bulk refactoring as tests update. So for that, um, I'm going to point us to uh, a suite of tests here. So I've got a directory with a number of different tests, all for uh, version one of this bookstore service. And the problem is, um, you know, this is great for version one. Version two is now getting deployed into the QA environment. I have to maintain tests for both, uh, but I don't have any tests for version two. So what do I do? And so what I would do is I would first perform um, some change impact analysis. And, and what this does is we can uh, very discreetly find out, and here I'm going to um, put in the, the service definition for, oops, for my original uh, service, and then version two, um, and, and see what the differences are when um, in, in context of the tests that I have. So you'll notice we have all these different changes. You know, for each test, it looks like we have more changes here for add new item inventory. And um, what I really wanna do is build a mapping between the versions so that my updating job gets easy. So now that I know what the changes are, I can come in and say, all right, let's add a new change template from old to current. And let's put it here. And uh, what's great here is this is a good example of uh, where, where AI can come in and be helpful as well. Um, what uh, SOA test is doing here is it's analyzing uh, a lot of different properties between, within the service definitions and it's looking to see, you know, what can it automatically or deterministically figure out that, hey, there's, there's nothing I can't handle about updating the client. Um, and then what, uh, what heuristics can we put in to maybe do a guess that, that these two operations are the same? Right, so in this case, ID, identifier, it's the same service. Um, and, and how can we make uh, building this um, template quicker? Of course, though, um, you know, it's not always going to get everything right. There might be changes uh, so different that uh, we need some human intervention. And here's a great example of it where price, it, it did a, its best guess to say, oh, it's connected to genre. It's kind of in the same uh, index of, of the sequence here. But we know price is not genre. We know price is probably most closely related to amount. So I'm gonna connect those two together. I can review everything else in product info if I wanna make any tweaks to the template there. Um, and then for genre, this is a brand new field that, that didn't exist in version one of my service. So I can come in, I can uh, have my template say, hey, connect the new client to a column in your spreadsheet for this, um, or just uh, hard code some value. And um, once, once you've built this mapping, of which a lot of it is done for me, um, this is where things really take off, because now, even though I have um, one test, 50 tests, I can now do a bulk refactoring where <clears throat> uh, I can take the tests that I have and update them to a new version of, uh, for, for the new version of the service. 
And so what's great is let's, let's take a look at the original uh, client here. So we can see that original structure. And if we take a look uh, at the same client for the refactor tests, we'll see uh, that it did all the bulk updating for me um, and everything is parameterized and connected the way it should be. So uh, I just saved a ton of time updating or rather taking my tests for version one and preparing them to uh, be executable for version two of the service. Um, thus uh, really enhancing my ability to respond to the, the velocity of change coming from development. Um, so that's, uh, that's some of the maintenance topics. And, and I know you're just getting a brief a glimpse or taste into all of these things. I could spend hours going on it, uh, but we want to be mindful of time. There's a, a lot of great things to show. And, um, uh, if, if you're getting really excited about this, we can always uh, meet with you to do deeper demos later. So <clears throat> now that we've covered the testers workflow, um, the next thing we're really going to get into is um, the end-to-end -end testing from the UI perspective. And so for that, I'm going to go to uh, our Parabank web application. And so here, what I'm going to do is use our Parasoft recorder to capture the API traffic uh, that's happening from the browser. And then we can see how AI is really helping in the construction of the scenario. Um, so let's log in. And then oh, I forgot to mention, um, this recorder also uh, enables capturing UI actions to build Selenium tests through our Selenic product. Uh, so it's kind of used across both products. Uh, but in this case, I really want to capture traffic for SOATest. And so let's do that create account scenario. I mentioned we're going to look at that in more detail. So, right, um, uh, and I think this speaks also to the, um, you know, it's easier to define the test from the UI because you're so comfortable with, you know, how the UI relates to the user story, right? So here it's obvious. Oh, yeah, I'm going to create a new account. I'm going to fund it from an existing account. Great, there's my new account. And I can dive in and look at the details. Um, and so, all right, so this is my test scenario. I'm validating the balance is there, $100. Okay, that's great. So from a manual testing perspective, I went through that, but now you can start having your manual testers or UI testers uh, contributing or playing a role in your API testing strategy. And so now that I've finished my recording, let's give it a name, smart create account. We can associate this to requirements. So if you're using uh, agile planning tools like Jira or version one or TeamForge, uh, there's some value there to associate tests to requirements. Um, but once I create this uh, test, let's jump back into so test and uh, take a look at what the smart API test generator did. So um, um, you'll see the same API calls that we looked at earlier. And it's, it's from the traffic we captured, but the real magic is actually in the fact that the tool was able to figure out if we look at test step three, oh, it's not hard coded. We were able to realize that the ID that's being passed in the request of test step three is coming from the response of, of the, our create account. Right? So that same scenario we looked at where I manually built this together uh, the tool was able to infer that information, that logic, just by looking at the data. And that's, that's what AI can do uh, to help save us time building these kinds of scenarios, uh, melting that ice cream cone down from UI down to API. So um, if I run this test, um, everything should be great. Oh, they're not. Um, and if we take a look, Oh, I started recording after logging in. Um, and this actually leads me to uh, another 
great uh, feature here with Smart API Test Generator, which is training the brain. Um, so a lot of these authentication workflows that uh, can be annoying to deal with or, or adds a level of complexity to the um, you know, getting started with API testing, uh, we can actually um, support this through our uh, train the brain feature. So if I come in, I know that if I add some HTTP basic auth to my scenario here, um, it's going to work. Now the problem is I have a bunch of tests that need this context. And you know, maybe uh, in recording, uh, if I would have recorded from login, everything would have been great. But maybe you're recording and this, this type of uh, activity happens and when the application starts up and you're not even gonna get a chance to record it. So what we can do is we can put in the logic necessary. Uh, we can train uh, the smart test template. So it's realizing, oh, hey, you know, there's some HTTP basic auth here. Um, and now I can come in and apply that to this test, to any test. And so what it did there is it took the knowledge that it learned uh, and added it to every single test client. And so now, even though I didn't record the login step, Every time I, I build an API test scenario for a parabank, it's going to add this, this authentication piece to the test it constructs because now it knows how to do that. Um, and so that's really, uh, that's really the cool part about this is using it to uh, much more quickly uh, get to that API scenario that, as I was saying earlier, is going to add so much value to the testing that you're doing. So um, that is the Smart API Test Generator. <clears throat> and the last thing is bringing this all together. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about the construction of the tests, the, the sharing or collaboration between uh, various um, uh, team members, um, and we looked at some cool new technology. But how is this really going to work when we have our CI pipelines we have the automation, um, and uh, we're trying to um, accelerate the amount of test automation we have going on. So for that, I'm gonna go back to CTP. <clears throat> and uh, I don't have a ton of time to uh, show you guys service virtualization, uh, just enough to tell you that it's a really powerful enabler because any environmental issues that you have that are preventing test automation or repeatable test automation, whether that's accessibility, uh, controlling behavior, or cost, uh, service virtualization can really be transformative uh, in your overall test automation strategy. How this all comes together uh, from a CI perspective is the fact that we have uh, our API-driven architecture for testing uh, this enables a lot of cool things where you can uh, um, spin up a bunch of servers into an execution group to parallelize your execution. You can create jobs. So say I wanted a smoke test job. I could then add scenarios for all the smoke tests that I have in here. And the great part is uh, uh, <clears throat> constructing the job that I want to execute in the environment that I want to execute it in. So maybe I want to reuse this test, not just in the dev environment, but also the QA or maybe staging. Uh, it's very easy to define what you want with your job. Service virtualization can also be very easily integrated into this. So if you wanted to um, uh, take your job and before you execute any tests, come in and configure the environment to a specific state. Um, that's all possible here. And the culmination of this all is really looking at what happens uh, really in that, uh, that CI pipeline. So uh, for any DevOps engineers that are watching today, um, I think you'll be uh, pleased to see um, how this all integrates with Jenkins, uh, for example, 
is I've got this nice Jenkins plugin. I select the job that I'm interested in running, and that's it. I'm done with my build step. Uh, but say you're not using Jenkins, you're using Team City, or I don't know, maybe you have your own build scheduler. Uh, here we have uh, this nice help text. Oh, it's just a curl command. You execute this API, that executes the job. And then when the job executes, we've got the report with all the data. We've got all the traffic with that report. And so we can very quickly get from uh, test creation, collaboration between teams, building what we need to uh, funneling that into our CI pipelines at the appropriate places. Uh, we also have plugins for, for um, build schedulers to help you with gating a build. So, you know, don't proceed forward if there are any test failures or percentage or however you want to configure it. Uh, so a lot of um, quality of life, ease of use capability in the automation uh, side of things as well. So uh, that's the big picture. Um, I think at this point, I'm going to pass it back to Chris and uh, we'll wrap this up. Thanks, Wilhelm. Lots of good information. Thanks for that. And uh, thank you, everybody, who's been submitting questions in the chat. Uh, it's a bit overwhelming, lots of questions, but I think we're, I think we're getting some good ones. Um, so yeah, so that just about wraps it up for Parasoft SOATUS. I want to I wanna take some time to talk about some real-world examples. Um, uh, obviously, you saw us demonstrate the Smart API Test Generator, which is a key component of SOATUS, um, which has helped multiple organizations uh, reduce the grind associated with uh, API test creation and something that we like to call tester fatigue where you're creating the same API tests for the same APIs over and over again um, Through machine learning we can learn uh, how to build those API tests and what critical pieces are important and this obviously reduces the the complexity and onboarding and and test creation processes significantly and, and uh, We think you would benefit from it too um, at Parasoft, API testing is just one piece of an overall testing strategy that we have. We start with our coding tools at the lowest levels of the testing pyramid to allow you to automatically build unit tests, get code coverage, create static analysis, um, and do that early stage development testing that's critical for shifting left uh, continuous testing. Obviously, today we demonstrated Parasoft SOA test. Uh, which has the API test generator component, as well as the ability to create those powerful tests in our load testing engine for load and performance testing. Service virtualization, as Wilhelm mentioned, allows us to simulate uh, services that are outside of your control, unstable, unavailable, or just don't have the right test data, um, and can be snapped in to create seamless test environments that allow you to test any time, anywhere. And a couple of folks online were asking us about our new product, Parasoft Selenic, which we didn't have time to talk about today. Um, but obviously, this is our AI-powered Selenium enhancer that allows you to create self-healing and uh, AI-powered recommendations for Selenium tests. Um, I dropped a couple of links into the Q&A. Uh, one of them is our resource for previous webinars. So we'd like you to check that guy out. Um, here's some more information uh, available to you. And I'll go ahead and take a second and drop that into the chat. But Wilhelm, let's take the last seven minutes and see if we can answer some of these questions. All right, so first one that came up a whole bunch was where can we get access to this solution? And so I'll, I'll answer that one. Um, you can get access to this solution by going to parasoft.com forward slash SOA test, the one you see in the upper right hand corner there. I'll drop that right here into the, into the chat. Um, and then speaking to one of us, and we can give you a, a customized demonstration or you can get a, you can get access to it. Of course, we will be sharing the webinar and the presentation um, as soon as the, uh, as soon as it's over here. So we've got one here. There were a lot of really good questions here. Um, what about performance testing? So every SOA test test case that's created, every SOA test test case, whether it's a simple REST API test case or an event-driven test case using Kafka can be executed inside of our load testing engine to allow you to run those at speed um, to validate your, your SLAs. Um, did you want to add anything to that? No. Okay. Uh, I see another great question here. Can you generate data for API tests? So uh, earlier in the webinar, I showed an example of uh, data generation, whether it's dates or strings or, or random numbers. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility available. 
Um, so that's certainly possible. Uh, if you want, uh, everyone will have access to the recording of this webinar afterwards. You can go back and reference that part of the demo to see that in action. I see one here. Uh, what kind of reports do you form, uh, report formats do you support? XML, JSON, JUnit, Allure. XML, JSON, uh, JUnit, we actually support PDF as an output. Um, HTML, HTML and XML. And XML. Um, and uh, yeah, and then reports can be consumed back into build systems with a standard uh, format here. Um, can you run this from CLI? Now you demonstrated how we can run this from the REST API uh, with the curl commands or from a native plugin uh, for a build system. But SOATest also comes with a rich command line interface that allows you to do everything um, from an execution perspective, as well as switching environments and uh, loading in uh, data sources and um, add anything to that? Yeah, um, I mean, one thing I'll add to it is uh, the, the SOATest server model that I showed uh, has a number of distinct advantages over CLI, uh, namely that it's always on. So as soon as you want to execute a test, it starts executing right away, which is pretty cool. And uh, the execution groups also makes it a lot easier to parallelize your test execution to get through all the test runs faster. I mean, you can do it with CLI, it's just uh, a little more work. Okay. Uh, I've got one here actually that says, how do you set, how do you set this project up on CI processor Jenkins? I would encourage you once you get the recording to rewatch it. Wilhelm went through, um, we have a native plugin for Jenkins that allows you to execute jobs and consume the re results back uh, through another plugin. Um, but yeah, we, we natively integrate with Jenkins as well as uh, re retrieving those results for all build systems such as uh, Azure DevOps, um, Team City, Team City Bamboo. Bamboo. Um, I see another one here. Can you run a test five times if it fails? So I, I think what it's asking is uh, can we build in some test flow logic uh, to do some fault tolerance, so to speak, uh, on the test that you're, you're, you're trying to run? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, that's that's a more of an advanced topic that um, we didn't have time to cover today. Uh, but uh, I encourage you to reach out to us. We can do a demo for you and, and show that specific uh, capability plus a whole lot more uh, if you're interested. So we've got a bunch of questions here around our AI. Um, and we have many blogs on our uh, on Parasoft blog that go into the actual implementations. But at a really high level, AI is present in uh, uh, two, if not three, areas of SOA test. The first one is in the change advisor workflow that you saw. Uh, which uses um, uh, algorithms to determine the best possible way to map two versions of a service together. And I would argue this is one of our most important features. Because when you have a library of a thousand test cases and suddenly an API version changes, what are you going to do? You got new elements that are showing up, elements that are changing locations or, or changing the order. Uh, are you going to hand crank all that? And so our AI makes that initial decision for you and then asks, what do you think? And you come in and say, yeah, you were right here. You need a little bit of help here. From that, you create the template, which updates the model. And then that can then a bulk update those test cases, which is tremendous. The second case, of course, is in the smart API test generator, uh, which uses the AI algorithms to look for patterns and relationships in um, traffic, um, either from the browser, as Wilhelm showed, but really any traffic uh, that's recorded through a Parasoft proxy. Um, REST JSON. And then what it does is then looks for uh, elements that uh, are changing uh, or, or uh, values that are changing and says, hey, I can link these pieces together. I can put an assertion into this area. Um, the, the third piece of that obviously is in the machine learning component where any of those rules or things that you've added or changed can then be uh, up, uh, sent into the smart test template and then set to Anytime I create this API test, let's pull those guys back in again. Um, let's see here. There's a lot of questions here, and I think we're just at time here. So maybe we will ask, answer one more. And it's the general, how do we get access? How much does this cost? Please visit us at parasoft.com uh, forward slash so test. Get yourself a trial. Speak to one of our individuals. We're really into the show me model here. Parasoft. So if you want to see the tool in action, 
uh, rather than some canned or generic thing, we'd like to talk to you, get an idea of what your use case is, uh, see how our solution can best integrate um, with your area. So yeah, I encourage you to, to, to check that out today. And then any of these remaining questions, we'll go ahead and answer offline. So Wilhelm, thank you so much for that demonstration today. I, I think everybody got great value out of it. Um, and for everybody else, uh, enjoy the rest of your day.